Come, Holy Spirit, give life to my words. Amen. Have you ever noticed that you've forgotten something important? A birthday or an anniversary gone unremembered and uncelebrated. Sometimes it's difficult to remember these things even in our own families, where we come from, and sometimes where we are going. So often we forget the things that should be second nature to us things that should be a part of us. The birth of a nephew or a niece or a cousin, each a cause for celebration. We have been witnesses to many of these life events, but we have difficulty remembering them. Enter the person who is the family historian, that person who maintains the family Bible, who writes the family history and post it on Facebook for all to enjoy. <laughs> this is being a witness to ourselves and our families. There is something to be said about maintaining the family history. The Israelites have done it for thousands of years. They have written and recorded information for later generations, not just about themselves, but their relationship with God and God's relationship with them they were witnesses. Jesus was born into that time, into that custom, where history had been recorded to preserve the stories of a people, a people dedicated to God. Jesus called his disciples to follow him, not a learned or scholarly lot. Most of them were fishermen. One was a tax collector, one was a zealot, a rabble-rouser who stirred up people against the government. Disciples to continue his ministry. Disciples to be a crowd of witnesses. But while Jesus was with his disciples, he taught them. He taught them love. He taught them compassion. He taught them about the kingdom of God. He taught them about the kingdom of heaven. The disciples were witnesses to the healings of Christ. Demons cast out, blind receiving their sight, the lame walking again, and even to the dead being raised to life. There were also witnesses to the feeding ministries, feeding the 5,000, feeding the 4,000, the miracle of turning wine, water into wine at the wedding. The Last Supper feeding all for the rest of time. They were being taught by Jesus to continue his ministries and teaching. But they were also witnesses to everything Jesus did. Everything Jesus said. And to the reactions of the people who listened to his teachings and saw his healings. He prepared the disciples. For that time, he would no longer be with them. And that time had come. He had been crucified. He had risen. He had appeared to his disciples. When the disciples saw him, they were afraid. He thought they, were see they thought they were seeing a ghost. But he showed them his hands and his feet. He let them touch him. He even ate a, ate a piece of broiled fish in front of him, in front of them. He was no ghost. He was the risen Christ. Once again, he recalled the text of the scriptures that everything that had been written about him in the law of Moses, in the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. This is not the first time that he had told his disciples the scriptures must be filled. He had told them before, and he opened their ears so that they may hear. And then again he told them, and he opened the scriptures to them. But this time was different. He opened their minds that they might receive and understand the scriptures. This time he adds repentance and forgiveness of sins. Which is, to be, which is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning with Jerusalem. Then he said to them, 
These are my words that I spoke while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Did you notice the phrase Jesus used? While I was still with you? His mission on earth had now been completed. He was preparing the disciples for their ministry. Now he tells the disciples, you are witnesses of these things. Jesus now reveals in no uncertain terms what the disciples are to do. That repentance and forgiveness must be proclaimed in his name to all nations. Jesus also tells them that he is sending upon them that which the Father had promised, the Holy Spirit. They are going to be clothed with the power of the Holy Spirit. It is this power that they will wait for in the city before they go out to Judea, to Samaria, and to the rest of the world. It is now time for Jesus to ascend into heaven. He leads the disciples out of Jerusalem, just a couple miles away to Bethany, a small village on the hill of the Mount of Olives. This is the same Mount of Olives that, according to the prophet Zechariah, was the holy mount where God is expected to appear on the day of the Lord and become king of the earth. There on the slope of the Mount of Olives, Jesus blessed the disciples, withdrew from them, and is carried into heaven. And the disciples were witnesses. The disciples worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy, being continually in the temple, blessing God. There they wait to be clothed with the power from on high, the power of the Holy Spirit, and they would be witnesses. Witnesses. Witnesses to the ascension, Witnesses to the power from on high. Witnesses to the scripture to which they were, their minds were opened. Witnesses to the flesh and body of the risen Christ. But this was only part of their witnessing. These witnesses, the disciples of Christ, were with Christ. And their stories have survived through the ages for us and for all generations. So what was all this witnessing about? What was it so they could emulate the Lord? Or is there something deeper living into the kingdom of God? Jesus told them the kingdom of God was at hand. Not in a thousand years. Not next month. Not tomorrow. Today. The kingdom of God is at hand today. How are we going to be witnesses to the kingdom of God? We celebrate the Holy Eucharist. To help out with outreach missions, we sell pumpkins by the thousands. But there is so much more to do. We invite strangers to be with us in God's company. We work for the dignity and respect of all people. Some go on to write books on theology and scripture. Others do mission work, either here at home or in foreign lands. And some pursue ministry, either lay ministry or ordained. Each of us can be witnesses in our own way. Each of us are able to spread the word. Witnesses to the glory of God and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Witnesses to the kingdom of God. How will we be witnesses in this holy cloud? Amen. <laughs>